For as long as rock music has been made, women have played a pivotal role in influencing it. In today's video, we'll be talking about one fangirl in particular who was incredibly influential to some of classic rock's most prestigious stars. But don't you dare call her a groupie. B.B. Buell prefers to be called a muse. And in the 1970s and 80s, she seemed to be everywhere, spending alone time with some of the biggest names in the music industry. Quite a few songs were written about her as well. Keep watching to learn all about her incredible life story. B.B.'s Early Life B.B. Buell was born in Portsmouth, Virginia, July 14, 1953. Her parents were Dorothea Johnson, the founder of the Protocol School of Washington, and Harold Lloyd Buell, a World War II vet and U.S. Navy officer. Since her father was away when she was born, Buell's mother waited until he came back home before naming her. Being temporarily nameless, the nurses at the hospital started referring to her as Baby Buell, which is how she got the nickname B.B. While she was eventually given the proper name Beverly Lawrence Buell, B.B. was the name she she was most comfortable with throughout her life. At age five, Buell was already obsessed with rock and roll music. At the time, she considered Mick Jagger her biggest inspiration. Little BB would spend hours in front of the mirror imitating Jagger's signature dance moves. Little did she know that one day she'd actually have an affair with the Rolling Stone. At age 17, shortly after graduating high school, Buell was discovered by Eileen Ford, a modeling agency executive from New York City. When she was 18, Buell moved to the Big Apple to pursue a career in modeling, although initially she wanted to become a singer. Being an up-and-coming model in New York meant Buell was invited to many of the city's elite parties. While attending these lavish affairs, she got the chance to befriend some of the top rockers of the era. Her alluring charm and charisma seemed to draw everyone to her. One evening, while hanging out and sipping wine with famed photographer Lynn Goldsmith, B.B. agreed to let Goldsmith take some artsy photos of her. Back then, artsy was just code for nude, but Buell had no problems bearing it all for the camera. Impressed by the shots, Goldsmith brought the pics to Playboy. Immediately, the popular men's magazine wanted to work with her. They flew her out to Chicago to visit the original Playboy mansion. In November of 1974, Buell was named Playboy's Playmate of the Month. And just like that, she had become the first fashion model turned Playboy centerfold in history. Ford Modeling Agency, however, was not pleased by her nude photo shoot. They had strict policies in place against such things. So they fired her. But that didn't hurt her career in the least, because she was quickly signed by Wilhelmina Agency. For the next couple of years, Buell got to pose for high-profile magazines such as Harper's Bazaar, Vogue, and Cosmopolitan. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. And stick around for more about B.B. Buell. B.B.'s relationship with Todd Rundgren Buell had many love affairs with some of rock's biggest stars of her day, including Mick Jagger, Jimmy Page, Elvis Costello, Rod Stewart, Iggy Pop, and David Bowie. She even earned the nickname Friend to the Stars due to all the celebrities that she befriended and dated. Outside of the music world, her name has also been attached to folks like Andy Warhol and Jack Nicholson. Mick Jagger even once said if he were to dine with royalty, it would have been B.B. he would have brought along with him as a date. Famous faces flocked to her, but one of her most famous relationships was with Todd Rundgren, whom she had an off-again, on-again romance with from 1972 to 78. The duo, who were dubbed by the media as rock royalty, were often compared to other prominent celebrity power couples like Angie and David Bowie and Bianca and Mick Jagger. Controversy erupted when Buell got pregnant. In 1976, Buell got pregnant, but her long-term lover Todd Rundgren was not the father. Steven Tyler was. B.B. and the Aerosmith frontman had a brief fling that neither star expected to amount to anything. But Buell ended up becoming the mother of the Dream On singer's child. B.B. realized fairly quickly that Tyler wasn't going to be a suitable father given his partying, drug-fueled lifestyle. So Buell... Tyler and Rundgren sat down together and came up with an agreement that Todd would raise the child as her father to give her a more stable home life. They further agreed to reveal the truth to her if the need arose when she turned 18. Things didn't end up playing out quite as expected. Liv Tyler, the daughter in question, became increasingly suspicious as she got older. So, B.B. disclosed the truth about who her dad was when she was 11. Rundgren and B.B.'s relationship ended not long after Liv was born. Buell's music career and autobiography B.B. always had aspirations of becoming a singer. In the late 70s, Buell and Patti Smith formed a close relationship and spent many nights drinking wine, writing poetry, and singing together. In 1981, Buell released her debut EP called Covers Girl. 
The record was produced by Rick Ocasek of The Cars and featured The Cars on each of its four songs. A couple years later, BB formed a band called The B-Sides that put out the album A Side of the B-Sides with the help of her former boyfriend Todd Rundgren as producer. Buell went on to front a hard rock band called The Gargoyles, who got to tour across the US and UK, eventually opening for the Ramones for a number of shows. The news broke about Steven Tyler's paternity in 1991, forcing Buell to take a step out of the spotlight to focus on raising her daughter. She spent the next several years managing Liv's acting and modeling career. In 1992, Buell got married for the first time to musician and actor Coyote Shivers. They divorced in 1999. In the mid-90s, after Liv left home, BB returned to the music scene when she released the punk single Retrosexual and formed the rock outfit The BB Buell Band. She then recorded a solo record that she released in 2000. In 2001, Buell published her autobiography, Rebel Heart, An American Rock and Roll Journey, with St. Martin's Press. The book went on to become a New York Times bestseller and was issued in paperback the next year. For the better part of the next decade, Buell and her band performed around New York. She later formed another band for a few shows with members of the Boston-based band The Ruds and drummer of the neighborhoods Johnny Lynch. In 2009, Buell released a single called Air Kisses for the Masses. She followed that up with a 12-track record she put on Amazon and iTunes. In 2011, she released a hard rock album called Hard Love. It was produced by Stephen DeAcutis and her second husband, James Wallerstein, whom she exchanged vows with in 2002. Even in her late 60s, BB is still writing and performing music, although she hasn't put out a record in several years. The BB Buell Almost Famous Connection when developing the script for his 2000 film Almost Famous, filmmaker and music journalist Cameron Crowe based the character Penny Lane on a handful of women he saw backstage in the 60s and 70s. While the character was largely inspired by a group of fans who called themselves the Flying Garter Girls, various other women have also been said to have inspired Crowe, including Pamela DeBar and B.B. Buell. Crowe even named a lead singer in the film, Jeff Beebe, as a subtle nod to her. Now it's time to hear from you. Have you listened to any of B.B. Buell's music? Let us know in the comment section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.